Good afternoon, everyone. This afternoon, we are going to share some light on uh, a kind of psychobio subject about our gastronomical discipline. Gastronomical discipline means our discipline about taking our meal, quality of the meal, quantity of meal, timing of the meal, is very much ignored. I'm not satisfied at all with seeing the way People actually treat their food, assess the quality and the quantity of the food, assess their needs by looking at their body. If we are overweight, then we should actually pay more emphasis on protein rather than carbohydrate. But here, you know, in this nation, we eat whatever actually falls in front of our eyesight. Whatever we see, we eat. We just don't assess the quality, quantity, the needs, the, what the food is going to do to us, whether we need that kind of food, or whether, we, whether we, should eat, we should eat more of one thing or less of one thing. We really don't pay much attention, not much attention, but not pay any attention at all. The proverb that I know is our today's topic. The proverb says, eat your breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a peasant. But I have actually seen from the very close quarter about every one, 99% of the people that I know, they have every single thing topsy-turvy, means all other way around. The proverb says, eat your breakfast like a king. It is scientifically proven that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Reason being, there are two fundamental reasons. One, the last meal, the dinner you have eaten around 9, 10 o'clock. And now in the morning around 8 o'clock you are going to eat your breakfast. There will be around 10 to 12 hours a gap between two meals. Your body starts of nutrition, nourishment. You cannot do that. And still lots of people are there that they don't eat breakfast. That is stupidity. This kind of concept, this kind of ideology has no any kind of scientific sense at all. Now you eat and your your, bre- your, your dinner at 8 o'clock and eating breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning, so 12 hours are elapsed, 12 hours are gone. Your body already starts of nourishment. Your body starts of protein and carbohydrate and all kinds of minerals and vitamins and every single thing. So you must eat breakfast after 12 hours, hefty breakfast like a king. The second reason is that early in the morning we get up, we always, everybody has work to do. Students have school to go, colleges to go, workers have work to do, businessmen have business to do, teachers have to teach, all kinds of people early in the morning, they have every single thing to do. So you're going to need energy in the morning. Now if if you don't have energy, you are not going to be Justifying your work. You are not going to be doing your work appropriately. You'll be tired at work. You'll be sleepy at work. You'll be, you'll be totally weak at work. You are exhausted at work. You don't have energy to work. Don't have enthusiasm or any kind of stamina to work. Because you're tired early in the morning. After 10 hours of sleep, you're still tired. No, it's not tiredness. It's actually fatigue. It's actually lack of nutrition that you know you know you have not actually fed to your body early in the morning. So these are the two reasons. The one that you have been eating breakfast up to twelve hours. And the second thing that you have to have to have to have to have to have eat breakfast because you are going to rest six to eight hours you are going to work. Lunch is, oh, lunch is also important, but not as much as breakfast. 
Now lunch is the second meal of the day that you are eating probably after six hours. Eight, o- eight, o- eight o'clock you have eaten your breakfast, 8 a.m. Now it is 2 p.m. and you are eating your lunch, so six hours. Breakfast you are eating after 12 hours. But lunch you are eating after six hours, so your body is not starved of nourishment or nutrition. So you must eat like a prince, not like a king. Breakfast should be eaten like a king. But lunch like a prince, little lesser, little lower in quality, lower in quantity, every which way. You should cut down on lunch in parity with your breakfast because you don't need that much vitamin and the, and the calories and the protein and the minerals and all sorts of things in your lunch. In most nations, after lunch you don't have long hours to go. In the Western country, in the offices and all the work is done around 5 o'clock. Now you eat your lunch at 2 o'clock or 12 o'clock, but four to five hours later, all your work is all wound up. You don't have anything to do. You wind up your work after four or five hours, so you don't need that much calories, that much energy, that much stamina. As much as you need in the breakfast, because you have all day, at least six to eight hours of hard work, is awaiting you in the morning, not after lunch. Dinner is the least important or necessary meal of the day. So dinner, like a pizza, like a farmer. Farmer eats very moderate amount of food and very simple food, very simple. No bread, no butter, no jam, and no meat, no fish, and no this, that, all kinds of garbage, nothing. Farmers don't eat that. So eat your dinner like a farmer like a pizza hut, eat little, eat simple food. Reason is that now you are going to rest, sleep for eight hours. You don't need that much calorie because you don't have any work to do. You don't need that much nutrition or nourishment because you have nothing to do. You are going to rest. Second thing, a dinner if you are going to eat very heavy, very hefty dinner, then you are going to have a big problem metabolizing that. The food is not going to be digested while you are sleeping. You are not going to do any kind of physical activity. So your food is going to just step put in your stomach. And early in the morning you are going to have cramps, you are going to have upset stomach, you are going to have dysentery, diarrhea, because you are destroying your health. Those people who have a big pouch, pork belly. Those people are the people who eat big dinners. After eating your dinner, you go to bed, lie down and sleep. Digestion would be very, very, very sluggish, very slow. Whatever the food you have taken is not going to be digested. And the rest of the food will actually turn into fat and you are going to develop your pouch, middle tire. So, but, now this is scientifically, this proverb is scientific. Eat your breakfast like a king is scientific, lunch like a prince is scientific, and dinner like a pizza is scientifically supported. But here in our nation, I see it's all other way around. People don't eat breakfast. People would eat big lunch, and then bigger dinner. Lots of meat and lots of rice and lots of chicken and lots of this and lots of all kinds of garbage at night time and after that, you know, a little bit of alcohol and then tea and coffee and ice cream and all those things are going to destroy your metabolism, turn your metabolism into catabolism. And when, the, when you see those people who have a pot belly, big, huge pot type of stomach, these people's metabolism has turned into catabolism. Food is not metabolized, not digested. So, always remember, breakfast should be eaten like a king because after breakfast you have all day to work. And your 
hefty breakfast, no matter how hefty you eat, is going to be digested, is going to be metabolized. It's not going to give you any kind of upset stomach or cramps or vomiting or nothing. Lunch you eat. Well, lunch should be lunch. A dinner, just like a pizza, very simple dinner, not too many calories, probably three to four hundred calories. Lunch should have around thousand calories and a breakfast should have about thousand to fifteen hundred calories depending upon your age, your weight and your activities, what kind of profession you are in. So that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for listening. See you again next time. Until then, God bless everyone on this planet. Amen.